Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. Today is the long-awaited video that I've been promising you guys for a while and that is how I frame my diamond paintings. I do have a video out there that I put out a little while ago uh, showing all of my completed diamond paintings and I will link that video down below. So, this is one that I have not framed yet. I have a set of three that I talked about in that finished diamond painting video. I have a number of them that are not framed yet. And I have a set of three to be framed for in my bathroom. And they're all dolphin themed. So I thought I would take one of the smaller ones from that set of three and I would frame this for you guys on camera just to kind of show you all the steps that I do to frame these. Um, the first thing that I do, and this is while I am still diamond painting it before I get it completed. I have to know what size stretcher bars I am going to need and I'm going to show you those in a minute. Um, but I need to know ahead of time so that I know I have them. If I don't have them, I have kind of a, a stash in my bedroom underneath my bed. Um, but sometimes I don't have the right size and so then I'm going to have to order them. I order all my stretcher bars and my canvas from Dick Blick. I will link those down below. I just buy the cheapest stretcher bars they have and I buy the unprimed cheapest canvas that they have and I'll show you that too but I will link them down below. So the very first thing that I do is I measure this out and I measure just the diamond drill area not the whole size of the canvas because we're going to be cutting the borders off. So we know because these are in centimeters that they're not always going to come out to exact inches, but you take the closest that you can get. So when we measure how high it is, it comes out to almost 19 inches. It's about 18 and three quarter. And when we go this way, it's about 15 inches. So what I do is I take those measurements and I add two inches because I put a one inch border all the way around my diamond paintings. Now if you want say a uh, three inch border um, or a two inch border, say you want a two inch border, you like a little bit of a larger border, then you will add four inches instead of the two. So with this one being almost 19 inches tall, I know that I would need two 21 inch stretcher bars because of course there's two sides, well there's four sides to the diamond painting. Um, and then with this being almost 19, no, this was 19 and this, oh gosh, now I forgot. Yeah, this one being 15, I add two inches to that. So I need uh, 17 inch stretcher bars. So I need two 21 inch stretcher bars and I need two 17 inch stretcher bars. And I jet that down. I go see if they're in my stash. If they're not, then I order some. Okay, now that I know I have the correct stretcher bars, let's go on to the canvas itself. Once it's completed, I hold it up to the light and just make sure that I am not missing any diamonds because we know that can happen. Sometimes we miss one here and there. So I just make sure that uh, everything is filled in. Then I do go with a toothbrush and I kind of just brush all over it to see, make sure that if there's any wax in between uh, the, the tiles on here, the drills, that I kind of get all that wax out. Uh, some of this may apply that I'm going to show you today may apply more to the square uh, diamond paintings rather than the round, but most of this is going to apply to both. After I know that all my drills are on here, that I've, you know, no wax is sticking on there, I go over the entire thing again, which I do do this periodically 
throughout the process when I'm diamond painting, but I will go over it once more with, this is, I really like this particular roller. It's a dual ended. And while I'm doing it, sometimes I'll use the smaller edge because I'm just doing a smaller area. Sometimes I will use the big edge, but I go all over it again, both ways. Ooh, kind of squeaky, ain't it? Sorry about that. We'll go this way instead. I've gone over this one a number of times, so I know they're pretty well drilled down or stuck down. But then I go at an angle also. And especially the edges. You're going to want to make sure you get the edges really good. And we'll use the small end for this. Um, because we are going to be cutting off the white border, you don't want any of the drills along the edge coming off. Now I do have washi tape still around here because there was quite a bit of glue that came out on both ends. Um, but that doesn't matter. We're going to be cutting this off. So I tried getting some of the washi tape off, but it's stuck on there pretty good. So it's like, eh, I'm not going to bother. We're cutting it off anyhow. Now, if you don't have one of those rollers, you can just use a rolling pin. And this is what I know a lot of people use. So again, you'll just go over the whole entire thing both ways and at an angle just to make sure everything is stuck down. Now you can use this as long as your granddaughter hasn't stole it to roll out her Play-Doh. <laughs> That's where mine was. It was on the table by the Play-Doh. <laughs> I had to steal it back. Okay, now our diamond painting is ready to be framed. And let me see. I wanted to write down all my steps so that I don't forget anything. All right, now, before we cut the edges off, I want that border on yet, and I want to seal this diamond painting. What we have found out in the diamond painting community is this Tombow, and I'll bring it up because I have you way up here so that I can show you as much of my desk as possible. This is called the Tombow aqua glue and this when you put it on does not take away from the uh, sparkliness of the diamonds at all it is by Tombow um, you can get this on Amazon I will link this down below now what most people do this and I know I had one open you think I could find it no but I have a number of these <laughs> because you do go through it's kind of fast. Now, everybody that i seen uses this Tombow glue full strength. And that's what I had done also. Now, when I did Maddie's and I showed you um, the framed diamond painting for my granddaughter that I just did for her birthday, I tried something different and it worked out great. This has a fine tip to it. And I imagine that is for, you know, the crafters, the scrapbookers, and, you know, things like that. So that's called the pen tip. Then you have a broad tip. And you just squeeze this out, this glue out, and you would apply it. So you can see it coming out. It is clear. It will dry clear. It takes a while to dry. And that's why this whole diamond painting process is going to be much longer for me because I'm going to be pausing the video, letting things dry like this glue. Um, and then when I gesso the canvas, paint the canvas, I'm going to have to pause the video and let those things dry. But one thing I found out, because this really gets to be a pain, even with the broad tip, really gets to be a pain to squeeze out the glue and try to spread it out. I thought, you know, this is regular glue glue to bind things down to paper. Do we really need it full strength just to seal our diamond paintings? And I found out the answer is no. <laughs> so I found a much easier way of doing it. I have a stash of these, just these little containers. 
and they work great for putting gesso in, for putting this glue in, the paint um, when I'm ready to paint the canvas. So I just take one of these, I already got one out, and I pour in a little bit of this glue. And you can pop this off, okay, so it does come out. And because this is quite a small diamond painting, well, it's small for me, I just pour in, well, I don't know, a little bit. Now, instead of using it, remember to put the tip back in. Instead of using it full strength, I mix it with water. <laughs> so I mix it about, I don't know, maybe half and half with water and I don't have water over here so I am already going to have to pause. Mm, I might need more glue than that. I think I put in a little bit too little. A little bit too little. So I'm going to pour in a little bit more and maybe I'll leave that tip off for now and I'll leave this open in case I need more. Well, no, I'm afraid it's going to fall out then. So I guess it's not that hard to get it back out. Okay, so I will be right back. I'm just going to add a little bit of water to this uh, glue, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, I decided to just bring a little cup of water over here because I'm going to need to add water to something else when um, it's closer to the end of the process. Um, that I also tried for the first time on Maddie's diamond painting and it worked real good too. So a couple new discoveries this last time after framing how many diamond paintings. Okay, so I am going to add eh, just about maybe that much water. Again, I do about half and half. Oh my gosh, and now I need a popsicle stick to uh, mix this. Again, I'll be right back. Okay, I just bought a pack of these popsicle sticks. I believe it was from Amazon too. I can link these down below too. They work real great for crafting. Um, if you don't have popsicle sticks, you can just use the, the opposite end of a paintbrush or whatever you have around. But I go ahead and I mix this up. Now for this process, a smaller container might work better than this. And actually, I think the last time I did this, I did have a smaller container. Now that I think of it, boy, I thought I thought of everything ahead of time. Just batting a thousand here today. So you mix it up real good. Just so you have a, a sticky enough surface where, you know, you're going to be able to cover the entire picture the entire diamond painting now what I apply mine with let me grab them this is something you can get at any craft store you can pick this up at Walmart it's just a pack of miscellaneous sizes of these sponge brushes so I'm going to take the widest one and I reuse these I just wash them out get the fuzzies back off <laughs> You don't want fuzzies in your diamond painting, so you make sure it's a nice clean brush. This is one I've used already. I, look, I gotta get some more of these nice wide ones. Alrighty, what I do then is I just take some on the edge, and you do wanna apply it liberally enough so that you know everything is sealed good, but not too much where it's you know dripping and I just go over and continue this process until the entire diamond painting is covered again you may have to add some additional glue and water if you have it mixed up enough and in particular I make sure I get the edge row and when I'm done applying it I am going to again make sure I have all of the edge rows done and I apply this before I cut the border off because 
you know the glue is going to go outside the edge so and I kind of go down to a certain mark so that I know that's how far down it is applied so right now I'm going down to where my washi tape ended up there so I am going to complete this process get it all covered once I have it all covered down this way I kind of smooth it back out again this way making sure again the edges are nice and coated but just to smooth everything out and this is so much easier than using even the broad tip on this bottle because especially with my very large diamond paintings it takes forever and you use a ton of this glue so this is a much much easier way to do it and a much more economical way of doing it so this process is pretty easy just takes a little bit of time so again I will finish this and I will rinse out this brush right away so that the glue doesn't get dried in the brush and I am going to wait probably a good couple hours just to make sure that this has dried really well before I go on most of the time when I frame these on my own I leave this sit overnight and just make sure it's really good and dried but because I want to get the rest of this video made today I'm going to wait I'll wait as long as it takes to make sure it's not tacky anymore I may use my heat gun on it not real close because I don't want to get it too hot but just up higher or my blow dryer maybe I'll use my blow dryer because blow dryers don't get as hot as heat guns so maybe I'll get my blow dryer out and try to help dry it a little bit faster but I will be back for you maybe just a second for me probably a few hours <laughs> okay we'll see you in a bit okay we are back the diamond painting is all sealed it is dried it actually dried much faster than what I thought it was going to but I did use a blow dryer on it too just to make sure it's not tacky at all and before I get to the part where I'm going to cut this all off because I'm only going to do some of it on camera I will pause again and cut the rest off I wanted to show you what the stretcher bars look like when you get them from Dick Blick so on the back it will tell you if you can see that how long it is this is a 21 inch stretcher bar so I have two 21 inches because I know that's what I need for around the edges here and then I knew because I measured it ahead of time I needed to 17 inches and that's what these are so this will go on the top and bottom so that's what they look like when you get them um, they're very easy to put together place them face up and there's tongue and groove on each corner so you just fit them together and I'm probably not actually going to do this I have Bob do this part for me <laughs> so you fit them all together and then what he does once they're together he measures it diagonally to make sure they're good and square <laughs> so I know it's a really good square frame so this again is how it's unassembled and then this is what it looks like once it's assembled so it kind of looks like a picture frame already now I suppose if you really wanted to just do it this way you can see the reason why I don't and the reason why they're called stretcher bars this wood is pieced together um, you can see like in through here maybe 
um, on each side. This is all kind of pieced together and that's why it doesn't necessarily work as a frame per se. But if you were going to maybe paint this where you wouldn't see that, there probably is a way that you could maybe just use this as a frame. I don't know, never tried it. So once you have this together, what he does then is he staples in each corner so that this stays nice and square. So every corner has a couple of staples in it so that I know that this frame is ready to be used and it's gonna stay square. Now, looking at this diamond painting, you can see even with the glue on, it's still pretty pliable and hopefully you'll be able to see it's still nice and glistening and shimmery. So the Tombow Aqua Glue did not take away all the glittery shine from the diamond painting at all. It's still really nice and shiny. You can't really see all the sparkle on camera, but trust me, it's still there. <laughs> okay, so now next step is to take your handy dandy scissors. I love this scissors. It's by Tim Holtz. It's called the Tonic. I'll link this down below too. This is only used for my diamond painting projects. I cut my canvas with this and then I cut the edges off for this. It's only used for this type of things. I never cut paper with this particular scissors. So I keep it just for these projects. So then what I do is I just cut along the very edge. And sometimes, you know, you gotta finagle it a little, little bit if one of your drills is, you know, just a little bit down lower than the others. But you get it as close up to the drills as you can because this will not be covered by anything. This is what's going to be going on the canvas. So you don't want any of that showing. Okay, so there is one side cut off. And I will again pause this. I'll cut all the other three sides off and we'll be right back. All right. I have it all cut out and it already looks more like a, a painting, doesn't it? With that edging cut off, it makes it look so much nicer already. <laughs> all right, now it's time to get into the meat of the whole process. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to put this on the side and we're going to get to actually making the uh, stretched canvas itself. So I cut a piece of canvas off just so that you can see what this comes on. I have mine um, again from Dick Blick. I have and you won't be able to see this whole thing but I have a huge roll of this canvas and again, I will link this down below. Um, I get, yeah, the the cheapest uh, canvas that Dick Blick offers. Um, you can get them in whatever size you want. I, I'm not sure. I can't remember for sure. I think it comes in one yard um, size. And then I think you can specify how long you actually want it. So I think this time I got like 10 yards of it. You know, that's a lot of canvas. Um, however, if you don't want it folded up, which we don't because then that's more ironing you have to do, down in the instruction box that's in the lower left hand side, you specify, I want on a continuous roll and then they will put it on a tube like that and roll the canvas up. That being said, there's always a few little creases and whatnot in the canvas, so I always iron mine to get absolutely everything out. So let's bring up this frame. 
Now I always cut my canvas plenty big so that I know I'm going to have plenty of room, extra canvas, um, that I'm not going to run short on either side. And I will just bring this over, make sure each side is covered real good and that it's about even. So it's even on that side. Let's see the top and bottom. No, we got to go up a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I have a heavy duty stapler. You can pick these up anywhere. This is a Stanley. Um, you know, you can get them at any hardware store. I actually got this one from Target. It was on sale and I really like it. And then you just get the appropriate size staples. Reminds me, I only have one more row of staples. I need to get some more. Um, so what you do, you fold over this first piece and you put a staple right in the middle. I'm going to stand up to do this and might want to mute your sound or turn it down because this is quite loud. <laughs> so staple in here. Then what you want to do is you want to turn it completely around and staple on the exact opposite side and pull it tight and then staple again. Plug your ears. <laughs> okay. <coughs> now, in order to get things really nice and tight, I originally used this. It is a canvas uh, plier. It's, you know, a set of pliers. And how it works, because now you're going to want to do one in the center on the other sides, is you grab the canvas. All right, get it in there. And you pull it like that. But then I couldn't have two hands for my stapler. Um, and I like to use two hands. Well, I guess you could. Because if you push on the top like this, your staples go in much better. And they don't need hammering in. That one's a little bit out, so it probably will need a little bit of hammering in. Again, you go to the opposite side and now you'll pull it nice and taut. Noisy again. Okay, then you will do one on each side. And I put them eh, a few inches apart. Okay, so we do one on each side. This is the noisy part. <laughs> okay, go back to the opposite side. So this is how it stays uniform, is you always work one side and then the opposite side, then the other ends. So we'll do this. And then you do one on either side over here. Yeah, Bella doesn't like this noise. Always making sure you're pulling tight. Okay, well, I'll just do a couple staples on this side and then I'm going to finish the stapling off camera. really not that difficult to make your own. Okay, so one thing you want to keep in mind when you are stapling these, don't get too close to the corners. That was my first mistake when I did this the first time. I thought, okay, we'll staple all the way out here. No, <laughs> don't do that because it really, you end up having to take one out. You need room to play with when you're doing your corners. So I'm going to finish stapling this up. I'm going to do three of the corners. I will leave one of the corners 
unfinished so I can show you how I do my corners. That's probably the most difficult part of the whole procedure. <laughs> and I'm sure I don't do them uh, probably the way you're supposed to, but it works for me. So I will be back in a minute. All right, I have everything stapled. I have three of the corners done. I'm going to do this last corner and kind of show you how I do it. All I do is I trim off some of the excess up at an angle. So you just have this flap left. I fold this down. Now this is the part where you don't want to be too close to the edge. Matter of fact, this one might even be a little close. I just fold it in so that I get a nice I'll kind of show you it up close after I staple it. And I don't want anything to show over the edge. Let's see. Yep, that looks good. And then you just, again, noisy, staple it in there. So now you can see what that edge looks like hopefully so this is just kind of a nice even edge to it so again that's how i do it <laughs> now if you need to add maybe i'm going to add one more uh, staple back here um, and when you gesso and when you paint i just make sure i get in all these nooks and crannies but we'll cover that in a little bit so yeah i have all of my corners done so this is what our completed canvas looks like. Um, what I do now is we have some excess canvas back here now beyond the wood frame. So all I do is I again I take my scissors. This isn't you know there's no science to this one. There's no exact science. You just trim it off. People aren't going to be looking at the back anyhow. And if they are, they shouldn't be. <laughs> the back isn't where all the pretties are. Okay, now we got a little bit on this side. And this is, you know, showing that you don't have to have it exactly centered on the canvas, but you just want to make sure that you're going to have enough of an overlap so that you have enough canvas to staple on you know you at least want it up to the lip of the wood frame so we're going to cut all of this off so when you first start out doing this your edges are probably going to be frayed because this stuff frays quite easily and don't worry about it because you're going to be cutting the excess off anyhow little bit on this side then we're going to add a couple of staples towards the ends here too that we didn't staple before we did our corners okay so we are getting there so i'm just going to now i'm not sure why this happened like this but i'm just going to fold it over and staple it that normally doesn't happen but Sorry if I'm bothering anybody's ears. <laughs> and I'm going to put a couple in here. Maybe just one more in there. We're almost done with the noisy part. But you can see why a person goes through so many staples, right? I think I'm going to put one in here. So wherever you think it needs more staples, add some in. Better to have too many than not enough. And have your canvas not taut enough. And I think 
that is it. Now, typically what I do before I actually start with the gessoing and things like that, because I have pets, I go over it with a sticky roller, make sure I have all the hair, any dust, dirt, whatever, off my canvas. And I'm going to go ahead and, well, maybe I'll just kind of give you a little demo of how I apply the gesso because the canvas that I buy, like I said, is the cheapest canvas that Dick Blick has. Um, I'm not painting a masterpiece on here. I am no artist whatsoever. So I don't need thick canvas and I don't need it pre-primed because the only areas that I'm painting is around the edges, around the border and on the sides. So I don't need to pay for them to gesso the canvas. I can do that very easily and much more cheaply myself. So the gesso that I use, I just bought a big, this is what, a gallon of Liquitex Basics Acrylic Gesso. I got this at Hobby Lobby. It was 25 bucks, but I got my 40% discount. Actually, I think I had a 50% discount for this. And a bottle this size is gonna last you forever. If you don't do a lot of these, you might wanna just get the pint. I think it's a pint container. Um, but yeah, I opted to get this great big one because I do these a lot. So again, what I do is I just get out one of my containers again. This stuff, I do not water down. I leave it full strength. And you don't want to skimp on this stuff. You want to make sure you put enough of this down because otherwise you're going to be using more of your acrylic paint. If you don't gesso at all, you're going to use a whole bottle of paint. So, because the paint will soak right into the canvas. Probably didn't need quite that much. Okay, so got my white gesso. And again, I just take a sponge brush. And I take kind of a, a little bit of a smaller one. I don't know if I would have to go this small. Well, maybe. Up to you. But because you're going on these sides, you don't want a real big one. Especially when you get to the painting part. So I would just take the gesso, let me bring it down a little, and I only put gesso like, you know, because you know you're going to have a one inch border, right, around the entire thing. So I go down a little bit more, you know, than what I need, but I want to make sure that I leave plenty of room for my diamond painting. So it's going to go over the top of where I gesso and where I paint. But again, I want to make sure I am down far enough. Okay. Now, typically when I do this, I do it on the table on a great big piece of cardboard. And when I paint, I do it the same way. Um, so I don't get things all over my table. Let me just finish this top part. And usually when I do this, I didn't right now because this was just the easiest way to show you. I typically do the sides first and I only, you know, do the front. I don't go on to the back or anything. Same with when I paint. So I typically do all four of the sides, making sure I just sew around I don't know if you can see that, but you know, around the edges here, getting into all of that, same with when I paint. And yeah, I think I'm going to staple this down more. Um, but yeah, you want to make sure you get gesso and paint around here so that if somebody sees the painting from the side, they won't be seeing any of that white. Okay, so I am going to go get my sticky roller, make sure all the hair, fur, and whatnot is off of this, and I'm going to finish gessoing this. I'm going to let it dry, and then we'll be back. Okay, the canvas has dried. 
the, with the gesso on. Now comes your biggest decision to make is what color do you want to make the border? <laughs> Normally, I only eh, choose between three, maybe four colors that I have an idea for the border. However, <laughs> because I know I want this one blue, there are so many shades of blue that I went and I pulled a bunch of my shades of blue and yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> so I have six different colors here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in some semblance of order from dark to light. Just so I kind of can keep separate which one is which. I use a little different brush, you know, just a small brush for each color because otherwise you're having to wash it out constantly. And I get one brush for each color. And what I do, <laughs> this may seem overkill to some of you, is I paint each color down a strip of cardstock. Then I cut them out and I'll show you kind of the process. I kind of hold them up by the picture um, that I put on the gessoed canvas and I kind of look and see which one I think looks the best. <laughs> so I am going to start with this darkest one. Most, most of these uh, are brand new and I thought I got the plastic off of all of them. But I see this one is still on here. Shoota shoota. Because like four of these were brand new bottles. Now the acrylic paint that I use, most of them are just your cheap Apple Barrel brand from Walmart. They were 50 cents a bottle. Um, I did get a couple like Craft Smarts. I think this was from Michaels. And they're just a little bit more. I think they're maybe 80 some cents, 70 some cents. Um, Cause I wanted a couple different colors, but yeah, the vast majority of the paints that I get are all Apple Barrel. This one is uh, Americana because I wanted this color. So I always shake them up good first. Now I don't put them in a container because otherwise you got to have six separate containers or else you got to wash them out constantly. So what I do is I just squirt some on the brush itself and I and I did put a sheet of cardboard here on my desk so that the paint wouldn't get on my desk. My new cutting mat. Now this is coming out pretty streaky not sure why probably because I'm putting it on too thin but I don't want to waste a whole lot of paint but yeah you can kind of get an idea anyhow of what the color is going to be okay so that's one color then we have that was the darkest one then this is kind of a mid blue. Oh, that's pretty, but I think it's going to be too bright. I want to pick a color because there's a set of three diamond paintings that are going to be hung together and they're all, you know, themed the same. I want to pick a color that's going to go with all of them. So that was the next color. This one is too blue. We'll see what this one looks like. And this is why I keep them in a specific order <laughs> so that I know which color goes to what bottle. Ooh, that's a pretty blue, isn't it? I like that. And you'll see the reason why I am doing this <laughs> in a little bit then we have I don't know how to pronounce it Bamini blue thought I had the plastic on this one too I'm like Ugh. now usually like I said I can fit all the colors on one sheet of cardstock but I usually am only doing 
three to four colors. So I'm going to have to use two cardstocks. So you know, this one's covering much better. I don't know what that first one, I thought I shook it up good. Um, if you have a paint like that, you may end up having to put two coats on. Okay, so I'm going to go to a second piece of cardstock for this particular painting. Here is more of like a periwinkle type of blue, a blue bonnet, and I don't think this one is going to look real well on it, but I don't know until I try it. So I figure I don't waste too much paint doing these strips, and it's not like these bottles of paint cost a fortune. Okay. Last color is more of a light aqua. This one is the Americana and it's called Spa Blue. And we'll see. I didn't know if I wanted to go with a lighter blue like this or the dark blue. And I, I really don't know. I mean, you can just look at the diamond painting and kind of see what color you would want to go with. I like to actually see the color right up next to it so that I really have a good idea of what that border is going to look like on that diamond painting. So to me, this was the best way of going about it. Somebody may have a better idea than me. So then I would just take my brushes, go wash them out. Now, this page, it doesn't take long for these to dry. So, this is my darkest color, and I just cut each strip out. This is my next color. Kind of cut that crooked, or else I painted crooked one or the other. <laughs> So that's the next one. Guess I gotta kinda cut along the lines where I painted. Maybe I should have painted these a little bit wider because we are gonna have a one inch border on our diamond painting. So I guess you'd kinda wanna paint a one inch border. I don't know. I guess it depends how much room you figure you're going to have on your cardstock. But this is why I paint it on cardstock and not just regular paper. Okay. So we have them this way. Then that one's a little wet yet, but it doesn't really matter. We will cut these out too. I hope y'all are finding this all interesting. I may have to wash my scissors after this because <laughs> this one is a little wet. You probably would want to wait till they're all dry. But I've had to pause and come back too many times already. We have had enough drying time for everything. Okay, so I'm going to put this wet one. Let's put all these paints way up here. Get them out of the way. So I'm going to put these up here in the same order. And maybe I'll put them over here because I'm going to bring the stretched canvas back that was gessoed. And you get to finally kind of see what the diamond painting is going to look like on the frame. Let's put the brushes up there. Kind of arrange this all. Okay, so here is, I'm going to take you back out a little bit. Okay, here is my stretched canvas 
that has now been gessoed on the top. You can kind of see how far in I've gone. And then all the sides are gessoed too. Okay, so it is ready to be painted. Now, to decide how I want to paint this, and I, I realize I have this diamond painting sideways, but it's just easier for me to show you. Let's see, I have you crooked. Let's straighten you out a little here. Sorry, guys. Okay, let's straighten you out. Alrighty, I guess that's good enough. Um, what I come on what I do then is I I place this about where I want it and you'll see how I make sure before I glue it down how to center it exactly but I will now take each one of these strips and depending upon if you have any white or not well let's do it now let's do it this way we'll tuck a little bit of it underneath and I kind of look and see hmm how does that look? No, I don't like that at all. Sometimes, depending upon if there's a dark border around the outside, but a pretty certain colors on the inside, I may pick out a color that's in here. Um, if there's a lighter border that is in the diamond painting itself, I may pick a darker color that's in there. It's just some color that's going to coordinate with the picture as a whole. So that one is a new. Let's see, I don't think I'm gonna like this. No, that's a definite new. Hmm, I don't know if I'm gonna like any of these. <laughs> Let's turn this around. I may have to go back in and see what other color paints I have. I don't really like that either. Hmm. It almost seems like I need more of like a darker periwinkle blue. I should see if I have something like that. I did want to try this because of the colors down in here. So let's turn this around. Hmm. I don't know. Let's put it down here and see. Yeah, I just don't know. I don't know if I like that or not. That one's a possibility. Then we have this periwinkle blue. Maybe we'll do it up here. Well, that one's not too bad. I don't mind that one. Hmm. Because with the darker on the outside, it might look better with a lighter border. Hmm. Let's see what it looks like down here. Hmm. I wish it had just a tint more of teal in it. Well, for now, that's a possibility. And the last one is this one. And that one, yeah, that, that's too light and too, too aqua-ish. -ish. Would probably look okay down here, but not overall for the picture, I don't think. So right now, it is between this one and this one such a decision process but it really really is important because it can change the whole look of your diamond painting once it's done get under there get under there see i should have made these much wider huh i don't know guys i don't know even as i look at it in the camera oh my gosh i don't know Hmm. I think I'm going to go into the bedroom, see if I have any other blues, which I'm pretty sure I do. Um, and I will be right back after I decide what color I want. I'll be right back. Oh my heavens, guys. It usually is not this hard of a decision. Believe me. <laughs> oh my God. 
I have so many shades of blue out here on my desk, you would not believe it. <laughs> I brought out every shade of blue I had in my arsenal. <laughs> and I even tried a real dark blue, but I didn't like the shade of it. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think we have a winner, winner, chicken dinner. I think I'm going to go with this shade of blue. I held it up to the other two diamond paintings that go along with this set. The other smaller one, this size, this goes really, really well. So I think overall, once I get all three diamond paintings framed and hung, I think this is going to be fine. I don't think it would be my... I don't know. I just can't find a perfect color for this particular one. Um, but it looks okay. And like I said, the other one this size, this goes perfect. It's got a lot more um, shades of this color in it. It's much more uh, tealy blue and lighter blue like that. So I think this is the shade we are going to go with. Yay! Decision made! So, I take this back off again, and we will get out our little paintbrush again. I'm going to go in the other room. There's really no rhyme or reason to doing this, so I don't have to show you on camera how I'm going to go about painting this. It's the same as the gessoing. I always start with the sides first. Go along the sides, making sure you get the corners filled really good. The important thing to do when you're gessoing and when you're painting is when you're doing the side, make sure you don't leave a big ridge of paint on the, on the top. Likewise, when you're painting the top, make sure you don't get a big ridge of paint along the edge, along the side. I always smooth it out and go, when I'm done painting, I always smooth it out and go along down just to make sure there's not a big ridge of paint or gesso if you're gessoing. So just make sure everything's nice and smooth and there's no big ridges. Um, do not be skimpy on your gesso. Put it on nice and thick and you won't be using as much paint. Uh, same is true with the paint. Make sure you put your paint, I mean you don't want to waste it of course, but make sure you put on a really nice relatively thick layer. Once that's dried, you can determine whether you think it's going to need a second layer. I think this very first one that I did, um, that color, I don't know, seemed kind of streaky or almost like the paint was watered down or something. I'm sure it wasn't, but uh, can I find it here? I mean, it just, I think that one would have needed more than one coat because yeah it just it didn't look good on the paper so I'm not sure how good it would have looked on the canvas so you may with some colors may need two coats I very rarely run into that like I said with all of them that I framed so far I've only had I think one maybe two that I've had to put two coats of paint on otherwise you typically only need one so I think before I paint this um, you don't want to get any hairs, any dirt. Um, I see just a little fuzz there. I think I'm going to go over this again with a sticky roller. And yeah, I see a little fuzzy up here. So I'm going to go over it with a sticky roller. I'm going to paint it and I'm going to let it dry. And then I'll be back again. You know how many pieces and parts this video I'm going to have to, in the editor, piece together and try to get in the right order? <laughs> So if you see this and something doesn't make sense where I'm painting it before I'm just sewing it, uh, I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> no, I should check it out pretty good. But uh, okay, I will be back with this painted and dried and I will show you how I actually get the uh, diamond painting on here and measured out and all of that good stuff. So I will be back. All right, guys, we are on the home stretch now. <laughs> so this is what it looks like once it's all painted. Again, I have the edges painted, making sure I got the corners real well, making sure I didn't overlap any paint along the edges or the front. Um, and then, so I wouldn't have to pause it yet one more time, I let that paint all dry and I took it outside 
we shake this up real good the paint has a real matte finish look to it and I like to have a little bit more of a gloss not so it's shoop see sure. yeah okay let's try that again not so it's super shiny but just a little bit of a gloss so I use this triple thick crystal clear glaze it's by Krylon I will link this down below also I do buy this off of Amazon you can probably get it at Michael's or um, uh, Hobby Lobby I'm not sure I just order mine off of Amazon so I took it outside sprayed the edges and the top everything that's painted I sprayed with this clear glaze and I let that out there to dry I did not put it in the Sun um, I don't know if the Sun would have baked it on too fast or whatever I kept it in the shade left it out there for a little bit doesn't take real long to dry but I left it out there for like 15 minutes or so so everything is dry now we are ready for the big reveal dun, 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 dun. let's see what it looks like on this painted canvas Oh, I think I'm going to like that. Let's look at it the real way. Now again, you probably can't see the whole picture, but I do think that this color is going to go real well, not only with this picture, because it pulls in some of these colors, but it's going to be awesome with the other pictures. So, okay, so that being said, we now have to figure out how are we going to make sure this is perfectly centered on this canvas. What I do is I take my handy dandy ruler, I measure the bottom, I think we got to come up a little bit. We are at just a hair under an inch. So then I measure the top and we're a little over an inch so we got to come down just a tad. No, we got to go the other way. What am I thinking? Okay. Now we are at right about one inch. And right about one inch. So we know we need it there. Now let's measure the sides. A hair under an inch. So I'm thinking we're going to have to move it a little bit. And no hair under an inch so we don't quite oh that's right when we measured it out it was going to be just a tad um, smaller here the border is going to be just fudge Okay, am I still recording? Sorry guys, I had to go on low battery mode. Let me get you back up on my iPad. And we are facing the wrong way. Boy, I'm going to have to edit this part out. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, we are now in low mode, so it's uh, low power mode. So it's a good thing I'm almost done. Okay, let's straighten you back out again. Oh, problems, problems today. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now I know I have my diamond painting right where I need it to be. I normally, at this time, use masking tape. For the life of me, I cannot find my masking tape. So I'm going to use some painter's tape. And this is kind of wide for what I need it for. I usually get like, I don't know, one inch masking tape I don't know what it was but I take this so that I can remember where I want to place it and I tape down the masking tape or in this case my painters tape and I go right along the edges right where I need to place the diamond painting this way I know when I place this diamond painting down that it is going to be centered. Now you have to pardon my arm as I do this one up here. Okay. 
okay and then just the other side and yes I normally turn this painting around when I'm doing it so I can more accurately <laughs> see but for purposes of this demo okay so now I have this all taped down you will now take the diamond painting off and we have to get some glue on the back of this diamond painting so I'm going to move the canvas itself back out of the way and oh gosh I should have left well I think I'll use this smaller sheet of cardboard and I'm just gonna kind of put it like this because we're going to be putting the glue on here I don't want to get it all over my desk you can see stretch canvas is really hard on your paint brushes sponge brushes <laughs> so yeah this one's going to have to be tossed but they do last quite a while anywho what i use to glue down my stretch canvases is this eileen's original tacky glue i always get this also off of amazon i think you can get it in walmart uh you know michael's hobby lobby i don't know if they have this larger size again because i use it so much i buy the bigger bottles off of amazon and i will link that down below too now i used to originally just go like this with the glue take a credit card or I have a squeegee and I'd squeegee it out but I was having a problem lately with their getting ridges on the front of my diamond painting wherever I squeezed it so I'm like hmm maybe I don't need that uh, full strength either just like the Tombow aqua glue and I found out you don't so this spreads much nicer if you mix it with a little bit of water I don't know how much I'm going to need so let's pour in a little bit of water that might be too much there now this takes a little more stirring than the Tombow glue did I'll get my handy dandy little uh, popsicle stick here again and you just mix it all together and you thin it out a little bit like I said that might have been just a tad too much because with this stuff you don't want to mix it half and half you want it a little bit thicker so I think I'm going to add back in a little bit more glue mix it again but I did Maddie's this way with the glue watered down like this and it stuck just fine and yeah believe me it's a thousand times easier to do <laughs> so I am going to use the wide paintbrush again dip it in there so it's good and soaking and just spread this glue paying particular attention <laughs> to the edges and you just you want to get everything covered real good with a nice thick coat after it's glued on I always go around the edges and the corners again um, I'll just kind of peel it up a little bit and yeah go along the edges just to make sure they're glued down nice and tight and just continue in this fashion because my battery is running low I'm going to kind of do this quickly plus you don't want the glue to dry out it doesn't dry out real fast but you don't want to take forever either <laughs> and I didn't mix up enough 
shoot. I'm just doing real good today. Now you may be able to do this with, you know, Elmer's with school glue. I don't know. I like this tacky stuff because it is kind of extra sticky. And I feel that it holds my diamond paintings on better. Well, maybe I'll have enough. We're almost done. Yep, just enough. Then I'll kind of go back this way just to make sure there's no ripples. And if I need to re-wet an area. Like I said, we're going to go over the corners and the edges again anyhow. Now this is the point where it really helps if you have two people. For any of my larger diamond paintings, Bob always helps me. But for this one, I'm going to have to do myself. So you place it down so that you are again lined up in your square that you made with the masking tape and you press it down okay oh shoot I put my little roller back I take my double-ended roller I turn this over after you know I'm sure it's glued on and I turn this over and I take the small end of it and I'm gonna go ahead and oh shoot it wasn't dried enough but I take my small roller and I go all along in this and I press it down really good so I get any bubbles and things like that out. So I am going to have to redo this. It wasn't dried enough. Okay, so I'm going to leave this set for a bit. Sit for a bit. Smooth it out really good. Then I do go, I'll have to mix up a little bit more, or I may use it full strength, but I make sure the corners are tacked down really well, as well as the edges, just to make sure it's going to stay put. And then, yeah, I'll flip it over, go over it with the roller. It's just about done. Um, when that is all done, you can take the... Uh, um, scotch tape or masking tape or in this case painters tape off and the only thing that is left to do is I have I bought these off of Amazon too <laughs> Amazon people love me I got a whole big set of the hangers and it comes with the little nails I just put them in these little containers and you measure out of course anybody that's hung pictures knows this <laughs> you measure out find where the center of your canvas is you just pound the little nails in and you hang your hanger on the back and voila it's ready to go <laughs> wasn't that simple yeah it's really not that hard it sounds absolutely complicated <laughs> but um, it really isn't. Once you get a procedure down, and I have done these so many times now, um, it kind of becomes automatic. I just had to write the steps down so I didn't forget to tell you anything. Um, but I let this dry overnight, and then I flip it over and put the picture hanger on. So, with that all being said, this is what it will look like minus the tape around the borders um, maybe in a future maybe uh, color and chat I'll show how this actually looks like once I get the uh, painters tape off and once we can actually see what the uh, diamond painting itself looks like because it's going to 
you know, look like this now. Ain't that pretty? But you can't see the whole thing right now, so. All right, well, I guess, guys, that is it. Um, yeah, just, just a few steps, but uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Typically what I do and normally what I would have done for this set of three, I would have hung, I would have uh, made all the stretch canvases and stuff all at once because it's much easier. It's kind of like an assembly line <laughs> and you do them all at the same time. When I made my kids, um, all four of my kids, uh, diamond painting for Christmas and I made one for Bob, I did all five of the canvases all at the same time and you know did all the steps all at the same time bobs i had to uh, do some of it at night after he went to bed of course but uh he didn't notice that i made one extra stretch canvas <laughs> so okay guys i am going to get going i'm going to get this started in the editor start piecing all these bits and pieces together and hopefully it will all make sense i'll have them in the right order if anybody has any questions whatsoever on any of these steps um, probably send me an email at lisascoloring.com because if you leave it down in the comment and if it's something where you know I'm going to have to maybe explain something and it's going to be a little bit long of a comment, probably easier if I just answer you back in an email. If it's some short question and you know it's not going to involve a long detailed answer, feel free to ask that question down in the comments or just let me know what you think of this whole process. If you like it, if it's something you think you may do, of course, this only applies to us colorists who also diamond paint. <laughs> but uh, I thought maybe all of you would kind of like to see what I all do with my finished diamond paintings. So, okay, with that, I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you enjoyed watching all of this. And if you did, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new to my channel. I hope everybody's having a terrific weekend. And as always, happy coloring and happy diamond painting. Bye, guys. Okay, I wanted to just add a little video to the end of this long framing video so that I could show you what the actual completed diamond painting looks like. I'll kind of turn the picture sideways so you can kind of see it all at once. Um, but you can see the color actually does go pretty nice, I think, with this particular diamond painting. Um, it is glued on really nice. I did end up, because I did water that glue down a little bit too much. So don't add as much water as I did. Just add a little bit to the glue. <laughs> so I did um, put some additional glue on here. Not a whole lot. I kind of left it in the middle, but I made sure I used stronger glue around the outside. I used it full strength up in the corners. Um, so that I knew that this was going to be on here really well. Then I took my double-ended roller and I went all the way along in here pressing nice and hard so that I knew everything was going to be nice and even. And yeah, by doing it the way that I am doing it now, there are absolutely no ripples no nothing so this procedure now that I framed how many diamond paintings this works so so much better so yeah it doesn't fall off now like it did yesterday <laughs> so yeah this is the finished product we'll turn it the right way again you can kind of see the top um, I know when I left off with the video um, prior, I still had the painter's tape, you know, along the edge. And I had stated something in that, you know, video that, you know, when the glue is dry, you can go ahead and take the tape off. I was incorrect in stating that. I always, especially if you're using masking tape, after you have this you know glued down and you know it's in place really good take the masking tape off right away 
and when you put the masking tape on in the first place don't put it down too hard masking tape could possibly especially if you leave it on until it's dry you know you leave it on overnight it can possibly remove some of this paint um, with it being sprayed with that um, Krylon glossy spray chances are it won't but maybe if you pressed it down too hard it may kind of strip away you know may kind of leave pieces of tape and stuff on here painter's tape you shouldn't have a problem with um, but your best bet is to just take it off right away and that's what I always do I don't know why I stated you know right prior to this um, for me it was yesterday but uh, I don't know why I said you know take the tape off later you should take it off right away so I wanted to state that also I think I'm going to make a uh, just a picture blurb to put in uh, the end of the video before this part happens just so you know that this is kind of an addendum just to show the completed diamond painting in its entirety now that the tape is off as you know I was running out of battery <laughs> so I was kind of in hurry up mode for the end of the video and yeah after the fact after I got all the pieces parts put together and I uploaded it to YouTube I'm like mm, I just don't like the fact that I wasn't able to show the you know diamond the the whole entire picture without the tape on and I did get a comment she was very very nice about it but stated you know it, it would have been nice to you know possibly see it without the tape on and if I could show it maybe in the future and yeah I could have done that in a future video but I don't know if everybody that would have liked to have seen the finished product would see that other video you know this that and the other thing so I decided to just add this to the end and uh, yeah so now this is the end of the video even though I said that prior <laughs> so thanks a lot again for watching everybody and happy coloring and happy diamond painting <laughs> bye guys